Today, I'm going to create a reading log, aka a bookshelf template inside of Notion. It will consist of two separate databases, a bookshelf and a reading log. The bookshelf is typical. You have your title and the genre and the author's name and all of that. And inside of the reading log is going to track reading progress. With that, I'm going to create some other automated properties and kind of create this reading hub for my workspace. So there are other ways to track reading inside of Notion and to track reading notes. You have programs like Readwise, which do integrate with Notion. You also have Goodreads. Now Goodreads has an API. You'd have to use the makeshift Notion API that is not from Notion, but from an outside source. If you have Python knowledge, you'll be able to integrate Goodreads into Notion. It is possible. For right now, I wanna make a bookshelf template that is entirely inside of Notion. So let's just get right into it. So I created the two databases and put in some examples to start. So we have our bookshelf up here and some example books. I have the author's name from last name, comma, first name, the genre, and that's just in a multi-select. And then you have the reading check-in here or the reading log. And each entry as the title, I want it to be the date. To do this, you're gonna go at, honestly, I just say at today, press enter, and you'll have a drop-down menu here. And I like to format it to month, day, year. If you're planning on having a calendar view, so adding calendar view here, you won't really be able to use this view with this sort of date setup. I find it convenient because I never really know what to put in the titles of these entries. I wouldn't put in the title of the book because I'm relating the book to the bookshelf, which I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And the date, it just populated here because I created a calendar view. If I were to create a date property and put the date in there, I'd have nothing to put up here as the title. So this is my workaround for that. Also, I don't normally use calendar view, but if you do want to use calendar view, create a date property. Okay. In the reading check-in, we have pages read. So every time I go in for a reading session, this is the date I read the book, the book I was reading, how many minutes I was reading the book for, how many pages I read. And I have an enthusiasm drop-down menu, which I asked myself, was it a captivating session, boring, or just okay? And we're gonna add more properties to this. So how did I connect my reading check-in to my bookshelf? I created a relation property. Come down here to advance. When you create a new property, click relation. And I'm going to go and search for this, the 2021 bookshelf. When you create that relation, you click on the cell, you'll be able to choose a book from this bookshelf remotely. So what's in this bookshelf? I have books that I am currently reading and books that I want to read in the future. Over here, you'll see something like a backlinking via this relation property. This relation to Fellowship of the Ring will give me the title of the entry I am connecting. So in the Fellowship of the Ring should say 1009 and 1008 2020, which it does. I'm going to change this to check-ins. So I'll be able to see within my bookshelf all of my check-ins, all of the times I went to read this book. And I'll see it as a date, which is also very nice. And another reason why I put date as the title. And I'm going to hide this. Okay, so now that we're faced with all of this, let's first focus on a little bit of the design. I found this awesome widget website called indify.co just for Notion widgets. They have your essentials. They have a clock that you can put inside your page, countdown, a counter, Google Calendar, life progress bar, quotes, and the weather. For this page, I just wanna put a clock and a progress bar. And I might even make this dark mode. So I'm gonna go Command Shift L, and that's on a Mac to give me dark mode. And I do want this clock in analog planets because I think it looks interesting. And I'm gonna switch to dark mode and uh, show dark mode hover bar because I'm usually in light mode. So I want that there. And I just copy the widget, come into here, paste the widget in this sidebar area, 
and create embed. And there we have a clock. Under here, I'm gonna put the progress for the year. Do the same thing, maybe do year, month, and maybe just year and month. No, I'll include the day. Copy it, paste it, create an embed. That looks pretty good. So I wanna create a property called length, and this is just gonna be the length of the book. Make it a number property. I wanna subtract length from this pages read to give me how many pages are left. And this is gonna be a part of the progress bar that we're gonna create via a formula property. So in order to grab this pages read from another database, I'm gonna create a rollup. And I'm gonna call it pages read up here as well. Go down to rollup, find a relation in this database, which right now we have check-ins. And I'm going to grab pages read from down here. And I'm also going to find the sum of pages read. So if I didn't say sum and just show original, it would give me every instance. So for a tale of two cities, come down here, you'll see there's one session where I read 145 pages and another where I read 196. And it would just show me those two with a comma in between. I just want to add them all together. Now that I have that, let's create this pages red slash progress bar. And we are gonna create a progress bar with emojis. But first I just wanna find pages red, create a formula property and go property length minus property pages red. So in order to create this progress bar, first I wanna format this to be text, not a number, because I'm gonna add more elements to this formula. From here, I'm gonna go plus an empty space. So I'm gonna use the slice function, or in other words, remove from the full progress. So at 100%, I want it to look like this, with these emojis and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then on the 10th, so when it is complete, I also want it to show a check mark. Put that in quotes. So when we hit 100%, which is a tale of two cities, it will show me this set of emojis up to a check mark. And what I wanna do is remove a set amount of emojis depending on the percentage. So that bar goes up and down. I'm gonna go zero, comma, and I'm gonna go prop pages red divided by the length. And I'm gonna times this by 10. That should give us something to work with so far. That is pages read divided by length here to give us a percentage. So let's give us a decimal point. In this case, it would probably turn out to be one, two, three, four, five, about 0.5. And this up here would of course give us a one for 100. Let's add another empty space. Now I wanna show the number percentage after these emojis. So for a tale of two cities, I want it to say 100% after. So really that's just pages, prop pages read. Again, just divided by the length to give us that decimal. And if I were to just format this like so, I'd probably have to round it. Okay, so I wanna round this number within the format. Formatting is turning it into a text. So Within this, I wanna round this calculation. That's a little bit too much. It's rounding us up fully to one or down to zero. So I'm going to add times 100 to the end of this. So now we have 100% seven and 53, and I'm just gonna add a percentage sign. So now we have this, I kind of just want to keep it here for now and move on, but I will be coming back to it just by the looks of it. I don't really like how it looks. I want to create another property that tells me how many days I've spent thus far reading this book. So you'll see from these check-ins, I've clearly spent two days reading. I want to see how many days thus far I have read or altogether have spent on a book. So days spent. Create a formula property. What I'm gonna do is just find how many check-ins there are. So 
That might seem easy enough, but it's not super straightforward. So if I go property check-ins, it should show me all of the check-ins. What it's showing me is just a comma and two empty spaces next to it. If I did something like this, see how we have a date as the title. If I just go test and add text as the title, it will show up here with two commas. So these two entries with the dates, they are registering, but just not visibly registering, um, which is kind of a bummer. I don't really like that so much, but it is what it is. We still have this comma, which we can use. What I wanna do is count how many commas are here and then add one. If property check-in is not empty, you could also say if property check-ins. Um, if it's not empty, I want to find the length after replacing, I probably don't have to do this, but just in case I put in some text values, let's just say replace all in property check-ins. That is not a comma. I want to replace with an empty space. I just want it to disappear. So I'm gonna go everything that is not, and to signify if something is not, I'm using this caret, comma, and close. Everything that is not a comma, I wanna replace with just an empty space. And I wanna find the length of this. So it's the number of commas, otherwise, just give me zero. Now what I wanna do is right here to sneak in add one. Because there's only one comma, that means there are two entries. If there are two commas, that means there are three entries. You may notice that in the Fellowship of the Ring and the Precipice, it says 7% here, but no emojis. And I understand why this is. Not until it hits 10% does it show me an emoji, but I don't want that. And I'm thinking there's probably an easier way to fix this, um, but with anything lower than 10%, I do wanna show just one emoji just to have it there. I'm probably gonna complicate things, but this is what I'm thinking I'm gonna do about this. <laughs> if I round property pages read divided by the length, so finding that percentage times 100, just to round it. If this is greater than 10, we will perform this formula here. If not, let's just copy this. So I wanna find pages left, which is this formula here. Add this space. Don't wanna do that slice though. Instead, I'm just gonna add one singular emoji. Plus, show me the percentage. Should work. Now every single instance, even if we haven't even started the book, will show up with at least one emoji and then just go up from there. I also want to add, see how I have this um, divider here between pages read and progress bar? I should say pages left, not pages read. Pages left over. I'm going to insert that divider. I think it's right here. Yes, it is. This, this is a little obnoxious, but could replace this with books, maybe? <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, why not? Let's also put in a property for chapters. Make it a multi-select. I just wanna see the chapters I read in this session. For now, I'll just go one to 30 and add more if I need to. So a quick tip um, is that if you wanna add multiple selections to your multi-select property, you can do it a little bit quicker by first typing in all the selections inside of a text property divided by commas. So I wanna go up to 30, just numbers up to 30, and then I would go into here and turn it into a multi-select, and it'll turn into selects for me. Let's say in Atomic Habits, one through five. All right, so I'm gonna leave it here. Like I said, everything will be easy to reference in the template below. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. All of the Goodreads and uh, the Notion Makeshift API, all of that, the Readwise, I'm gonna leave all that down below as well. Um, and yeah.
that's about it. I will see you guys next time.